The 2022 Air and Space Power Conference is now drawing to an end. It's my pleasure to once again welcome Air Marshal Hupfeld, Chief of Air Force, to the stage where he will deliver his closing remarks. Sir. Thank you, that's very kind of you, particularly uh, when no one ever wants to have to speak after Brendan Nelson. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, really for the last time for me for this conference, uh, and you've seen a bit of me, uh, but I acknowledge the none of all people, the traditional custodians on this land where we've held this uh, amazing event, made most amazing by all of you, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. It's certainly been my great privilege to welcome and host all of our international delegations, distinguished guests, partners and aviators who've attended this week, and of course those uh, who have also joined us digitally. I certainly uh, reaffirm and extend my appreciation to those, all of those that have made this conference possible. I mentioned them, uh, uh, certainly the Air Force personnel specifically uh, at the start, and I just reaffirm my thanks to all of them. I do specifically thank the principal sponsor for the conference, that's Boeing, uh, and our major sponsors, L3 Harris Integrated Mission Systems Australia, Lockheed Martin Australia, and Rolls-Royce Australia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, some, some key parts of industry, uh, and uh, without your support, this conference wouldn't, would not have been possible uh, the way it's been presented. The theme of the 2022 Air and Space Power Conference, resilience and innovation in air and space, has certainly echoed throughout the presentations and has raised many thought-provoking questions uh, and discussion um, as a result. Yesterday morning, it seems uh, quite a long time ago, but yesterday morning I highlighted that one of the main points of this con conference, alongside enabling all of us to connect, uh, the other item was to ignite your thinking, uh, our thinking, and I'm confident that uh, this, uh, this uh, intent has been well achieved. Now there's far many, or too many highlights for me to reflect on, on them all, but I will offer you a couple um, uh, just in summary of the events of the last two days. It was certainly uh, a privilege uh, for all of us, and certainly for me, to have the Honourable Peter Dutton MP, um, our Minister for Defence, to join us and officially announce the stand-up of Australia's Defence Space Command, and I also emphasise that he did release our defence space strategy, a really important piece of work and documentation that will lead us forward. The, pers the perspective he offered on some of the regional and global challenges that we face, and indeed his candour and, and very much clear focus, they were both refreshing and bracing in light of the current events. And I'll note as a significant point for our minister, I think he did add a degree of demonstrated warmth, particularly uh, in relation to our engagement with key partners and friends, uh, many of whom have been able to, to visit, and I thank you all for coming along for this conference. The announcement of Space Command and the launch of the Space Power Manual and that Defence Space Strategy were greatly enriched by General Jay Raymond, who came and uh, presented a keynote for us this morning. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful presentation and the question session that followed uh, as equally enlightening. I also uh, thank and, and congratulate the space-focused plenary that followed that this morning, uh, and I'm very proud of our Australian com contributors for that, both from government, defence, uh, industry and the private sector. And I'd, I'd say, uh, it's fair to say that space is now well and truly front of mind, certainly in Australia, but to all participants here, and it's taking its rightful place as an operational domain right alongside the um, air, maritime, land and cyber domains, but all with a unified purpose of serving our national and collective interests. And I'll note this morning that we opened our uh, building where the headquarters of the Defence Space Command will be situated. Um, I've got uh, an emblem that Kath Roberts gave to me at that ceremony, uh, and she said, oh, um, yeah, you can put it on, sir, but..." You know, it's not, it's, you'll be out of uniform, it's not part of our, our uniform. And I said, Kath, I thought we'd talked about being bold here. You can easily fix that. How about you make it part of the uniform? Um, that would be appropriate. I also highlight there, and I think uh, echoing some of Brendan's words, that I opened a building, but it's the people in the building that are heart, the heart of what we do and what we're going to achieve uh, around space. 
uh, Bilahari uh, Kosakhan's uh, insights and perspectives right at the start of our conference on what he referred to as the China dilemma was, was a truly masterful survey of the drivers within our current geostrategic environment. I'll no doubt return from this conference uh, to the records that we've got to review his words again and I encourage all of you to do the same. And I expect that I'll be further enriched uh, with uh, every attempt that I take to dig into those very nuanced layers that he so masterfully wove. We then heard from Professor Tanya Munro and Carl Gibson. Their presentations were equally rich. And uh, as I've now worked to understand all the complexity of resilience and innovation, I now certainly have a much deeper appreciation and I thank them sincerely for that. Now a question that's arisen in my mind following Tanya's presentation is how do we keep science and technology um, focused on the immediate needs that we might have, but without constraining them. And I think the pendulum does need to shift here uh, to enable us to best go after emerging, uh, 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 best go after those emerging opportunities and at pace. I trust the Innovation Expo evoked uh, some thoughts on the immense potential that can be realised when you have research and innovation from defence that's complemented with research institutions, academia, startups, and industry. And I'd, I'd like to take the opportunity to also thank Air Vice Marshal retired John Blackburn for his excellent framing of the resilience and innovation discussion. And I, and I think importantly for his powerful honesty in reflecting on his time as the Deputy Chief of Air Force and, re and referencing that to the knowledge he has today and what he maybe uh, would have done differently. And I think that's something for us all to think about in our current positions, uh, to try and uh, examine how we can think further ahead and raise our horizon uh, and do better for what's coming in the future. I'd also like to express, uh, express pride in one of my own staff, key staff. Um, well, he's a commander, and that's the Air Commander Australia, Air Vice Marshal Jay Yavasi, his perspectives in both his presentation and in indeed his discussion in the Q&A I found very compelling. It's certainly been a privilege for me to serve alongside him uh, and uh, Vinnie if you're out there I thank you very much for advancing my thinking on some of those uh, very key topics. I have no doubt that General Luton, uh, Air Vice Marshal Andrew Clark's fellow servicemen and women will be equally proud of their deep intellect and the insightful appreciation of the broad array of issues that are facing us all. And the cascading thread of people, ideas and things was a key takeaway. Hugh Webster's compelling narrative on uh, the need uh, for progress in defence industry partnerships was picked up this afternoon by both uh, Air Vice Marshal Denny and Michael Shrewbeds. Well, I hope it was. That's what they were told to do. Um, and certainly the, the short period of questioning that I saw um, certainly uh, uh, pointed me in the direction of their achievement. Certainly a case for meaningful change has never been clearer nor more urgent. I'd like, like to thank my fellow domain leads for joining me for the launch of the two manuals uh, that we launched uh, and for sharing their perspectives. It's uh, certainly a great opportunity to demonstrate to everyone how truly unify, unified we are in our purpose. And indeed, the ability and the courage to have a contest of ideas amongst each of us and to be able to bring those forward to make the right decisions with a full understanding of the risks that apply to each of those decisions. Now, of course, I would like to again acknowledge Brendan Nelson for his powerful message, uh, reflecting on our proud history to drive home that enduring importance of leadership and people in success in any endeavour, uh, not least of which is war. Uh, and a very powerful presentation, as, as normal from Brendan. Uh, and uh, most of us, when we do a, a video recording like that, we use a teleprompter to, to assist. I feel certain that Brendan had no such teleprompter there. Um, he speaks like that every time, and as Gretchen highlighted, uh, it would have been great to have had him here. Uh, very powerful, and uh, he certainly believes in what he speaks about. It certainly takes me back to my central message from yesterday, 
the future of air and space power is you, its current and future practitioners. Your ability to work together with all the elements of military power and the instruments of national power are key to our effectiveness. Engaging with every opportunity to advance your thinking at, at conferences such as this one will have tangible benefits to this outcome and to your much valued service. I encourage, I encourage you all to review the proceedings when you can over the, the coming days and, and uh, weeks as our conversations will be available to review and to revisit online at any time in the future through the Air and Space Power Centre's website. The many activities we've conducted have given us an invaluable opportunity to reconnect with each other as people with a genuine desire to strengthen our bonds of friendship founded on a community with common values, striving for common purpose for the advancement of our collective prosperity. So as I bring this conference to a close, I'm encouraged to know that many more answers await us as we process the vast information that we've been able to share and we begin to apply it to build resilience and innovation in our collective efforts to maintain the prosperity of our region. We eagerly await you at our next conference. My sincere thanks to all participants and contributors. And so until we meet again, farewell, safe travels home, and thank you very much. <laughs>